Sound Spades, and this week I bring to you production audio people a way of hiding a cable that you might not have considered before. Let's say you're shooting out on location at a house and you have quite a few scenes to do out there over maybe one or two days. Well, whenever camera's looking this way, then the monitors have to be back this way. Turn around and suddenly the camera's looking this way, right where the monitors used to be, and they have to relocate behind camera again. Well, as you go about multiple setups over multiple scenes, camera's going to be bouncing all over the place. Now, sound mixers, on the other hand, don't normally like to move. Once they find a place, they like to just put their feet up and settle in. If it's cold outside, they, of course, want to be inside where it's warm. If it's hot outside, they want to be inside where the air conditioning is. And, of course, they don't want to have to move. They want to just sit down, chill, surf on their iPads and their phones. Therein lies the challenge for the sound utility because the sound mixer needs picture in order to mix their sound to. It's got to be mixed so that way it sounds like the picture looks. But that can be problematic if the sound Sound mixers over there and the cameras are looking back that direction. How are you going to run a cable out there? The obvious answer requires a lot of cable and either you have to cable out the side window or the back door and then cut it really really wide to keep the camera from seeing it. Of course all it takes is the DP saying let's not look at it from this angle let's look at it from this angle to suddenly realize that you have to reroute a few hundred feet of cable not just back but then you have to route it around a totally different direction that can drive a sound utility crazy every time you look back at the house you got to change the cable for that lazy sound mixer but of course it's annoying and you have other things you'd like to do but how can you possibly get around this most houses you shoot at have a paved driveway and most even have a paved walkway that goes either from the driveway or the street to the main door and you can't take advantage of that if you know what you're doing of course it involves making friends with the onset dresser because they can really come in handy if you know what to ask for productions love trees and bushes and little things like that that obstruct the view of a cable from coming out of a window okay so now you've got the cable out of the window behind the bush here's how to get it to the front of the house your onset dresser might have an edger and if they don't see if you can talk to them about this in either location scout on the picture before you even start production or at the beginning of a television show because it might be a good thing for them to have on hand because if you edge the side of the driveway then it will define the edges better for camera they'll appreciate that and it also gives you a little trough that you can put your cable in of course you're going to want to go through proper channels to get approval for this but chances are it's not going to be very hard to get because i'll say it again a well-edged driveway looks very good on camera the video cable that runs between the sound mixer and video village should fit nicely in the trough between the driveway and the front yard and Hopefully that video cable is black without any kind of obtrusive tape colors on there like yellow or red or even white because those will help it to stand out. And of course, as long as that cable is down in that trough, chances are it's not going to be a tripping hazard. And of course, it's going to, if anything, help visually sharpen the edge between the driveway and the front yard. Now let's look at this in action. And I'm going to apologize in advance because when I was recording this, the gaffer was building a flickering fire effect because basically there was a building on fire that the cast members were looking at and they had to show on their face. But of course it doesn't do our video any justice and I may go black and white after a couple of seconds if it starts to drive me crazy in the edit. Here I am standing on the grass looking at the sidewalk and nothing is pulling your eye. That's what camera people are going to be looking at is something that pulls your eye indicating that there's something out of place and needs to be adjusted. You're not seeing that cable because it fits so nicely and it's neatly inside of this little trough and it takes you going all the way to the end where it breaks out of the sidewalk in that little trough to actually go up to Video Village before you actually see it. This trick helps to reduce the amount of cable used on long cable runs, and if one cable is not quite long enough to reach between the sound mixer and video village, and you need to couple two of them together, do so in a very neat fashion, and if there's any silver or anything other than black showing, wrap it with black paper tape because you don't want it pulling the eye of the camera, otherwise they're going to make you pull the whole thing out. I have not yet run into a circumstance where it would have come in handy for the sound mixer to carry his own lawn edger, because with proper planning, the set decoration department should have you covered. That's sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.